So now we're going to continue our look at the um, abnormalities that are seen within chromosomes. But now instead of focusing on chromosome number, we're going to switch gears again and look at something known as chromosome structure and the alteration of that structure and its implications to us in human genetics. So we'll entitle this next flowchart, Alteration of Chromosome Structure. Okay, just one flowchart on this topic, alteration of, we'll call it chromo for short structure. So this is different than alteration and abnormality within chromosome number. Different idea, thus different flowchart. So first and foremost, we're going to explain why an alteration in the structure of a chromosome would happen. And this would be mostly in part due to errors, okay, these are inborn errors in things like meiosis, okay, um, or a damaging agent, let's say. Damaging agent, meaning that if you have radiation or maybe chemical exposure to something, your chromosome structure might be altered. This is another way to talk about chromosome structure alterations are known as chromosomal aberrations. Okay, that's another word. Aberrations is a different way to explain these. So this is a very important topic, a very important um, competing topic in the idea of cancer as well. But that's besides the point. We're going to get into the actual problem seen with chromosomal structure alterations um, right over here. And there are four main types of problems that can happen in the term in terms of chromosome structure. Okay, so four types of we'll call them problems. Okay, four types of problems that your chromosome structure can face in terms of an alteration. First and foremost, that can be an outright and this one's very easy to understand deletion. And this deletion would mean that a chromosomal fragment is simply lost. So a chromo fragment is completely lost, okay? And if that chromosomal fragment is completely lost, the genes themselves are also lost. So that is a big consequence of this deletion. Very simple, very short, very sweet. If a chromosome fragment is lost, the genes on that fragment are also lost. So that's an alteration of um, chromosome structure. Oh, this is supposed to say alteration, not alternation. This is an alteration of chromosome structure the deletion. Another one that could happen is something known as duplication. Okay, So this is sort of uh, sometimes considered the opposite of deletion. In duplication, what we have is a duplicated fragment. Okay, So that's why it's called duplication. There it is. A duplicated fragment. So this is all pieces of chromosomes, not entire chromosomes. Okay, If we had entire chromosomes, then we'd be changing chromosome number, and that wouldn't be on this chromosome structure flowchart. This is all fragments. There are duplicated fragments that actually attaches. Okay, So we'll say a duplicated fragment of a chromosome attaches to, um, let's say, either a sister or even sometimes a non sister chromatid. The key idea here is that there is a duplication and this duplication of genes, thus a duplication of chromosomes, is only going to happen on and within the same homologous pair. Okay, So same homologous pair. So you have a chromosome and it has a sister chromatid. There are two sister chromatids. And sometimes what's going to happen is there's going to be a duplication. And as long as that duplication, that fragment, stays within the homologous pair, you can consider this problem, this alteration, a duplication. There's a difference because we're going to be looking at um, the uh, not the opposite, but a different version of this that is known as something else. Well, we'll get to it in just a second. So this is one, this is two. The third type is known known as an inversion. And again, these are very visual heavy terms. Okay, These terms are not done to justice by just these words that I'm writing. Open up your textbook and look at the image of these things within this chapter on human genetics. So inversion is a little bit different than the ones we've already talked about. This is when a fragment, again a fragment, not an entire chromosome, a fragment um, attaches to an original chromosome so you might be asking yourselves, okay, what happened? The fragment went away, got lost, whatever, and went back to the original chromosome. What's the big deal? The big deal is the fragment attaches to an original chromosome, but in a, let's say, reverse orientation. The genes are 
opposite. They're not in the correct order. They're not in that correct 5 prime to 3 prime order, let's say, for lack of a better idea in that situation. So this inversion is also uh, a chromosomal alteration problem. And the last one that we'll talk about in ties with myth duplication is something known as translocation. So sometimes what you can have is the exact same idea right over here, but the idea is different because the fragment actually does not attach to the sister or non-sister chromatid. The fragment actually attaches to non-homologous, so something that's not homologous. So it goes, let's say, from a chromosome 1 area all the way to, let's say, a chromosome 4. That's a translocation. And that translocation is very specific um, to uh, a lot of genetic disorders as well. So this would be jumping chromosome numbers in a sense. Fragment attaches to non-homologous chromosome. In this situation, let's say, in duplication, this is all within, let's say, chromosome 1. In translocation, this fragment attaching is not just within chromosome 1, but it could be chromosome 1, 2, chromosome 5. A piece of chromosome 1 goes to chromosome 5. That's known as translocation. In duplication, a piece of chromosome 1 goes to a non-sister chromatid still within chromosome 1. You should be able to understand those differences very clearly based off of our discussion in meiosis about sister and non-sister and homologous and non-homologous. Okay, finally, let's finish off with an example. Um, very cool name to this example, but a very sad example nonetheless. It's called Cree du Ket. I believe that's what it is. I have no idea if that's actually how you pronounce it. I doubt it's Cry du Chat, but I believe it's Cree du Chat, and I believe that stands for Cry of the Cat. A very interesting name to a very sad um, chromosomal structural alteration. In this specific example, we have a very specific deletion, okay? Deletion, what is a deletion? A deletion is a type of problem right over here that is seen in the alteration of chromosome structure. So this is a specific deletion, which is what we covered, and that deletion is at chromosome 5. So we'll at chromo 5. So the genes on chromosome 5 are deleted. Thus, they are lost. Thus, they won't be expressed. This is actually going to cause the individual who expresses the Cree Ducat um, phenotype to be intellectually disabled. Okay, so they are intellectually disabled. So they have problems with intellect. Thus, problems with um, brain development. Let's say, and they also have a noticeably small head. Okay, very noticeably small head, so these are our phenotypic changes. And the name, Cry of the Cat, um, is actually exactly what it sounds like. Um, this actually occurs because there are cry sounds that come from this individual that sound like a distressed cat. So very sad to even think about something like this, um, but the name is exactly what it implies. There are cry sounds from this individual. When this individual cries, it sounds like a distressed cat. Um, and uh, unfortunately, this individual actually will usually die in infancy or usually early childhood. So a very sad example of the, but a very sad but um, understandable example because we have to understand that if you have complete deletions of a chromosome, realize how big of a problem that is because you are completely losing genes and because you're completely losing genes you're getting something as broad as intellectual disablement being intellectually disabled and causing these side effects and the dying in infancy shows you just how problematic an alteration of chromosome structure really is so it really gives you a good scope and understanding and appreciation for having a normal chromosome structure and a normal chromosome number. This is something that we have to appreciate and understand when we look at the study of genetics. Oftentimes students ask me, why do we study all these problems? These problems are studied because now we can appreciate the norms that we have and often take for granted. So we'll continue our discussion on human genetics as we move forward in the lecture series.